One question that I get asked occasionally is how I get the bottom of my mugs smooth because I try and get them as um, polished smooth as possible without spending too much time on it and the answer is kind of in two parts so depending on your clay you can either do the before firing part or the after firing part or both but both is the best combination so the first thing is burnishing the clay so while I'm trimming this is kind of oh, I suppose leather hard is probably about right but you know it's, it's a trimmable dryness so you've got the clay reasonably dry and it you know it's forming ribbons like that so it's it's still not it's not bone dry it's not coming off in splinters but it's also not so wet that um, the ribbons are plastic so if you've got the clay that sort of level of dryness what you can do is use a rib I'm using a green mud tools rib um, and you burnish it and so if you watch you'll be able to see it on this section the, the clay will become more and more glossy as I do this Hopefully the camera did pick that up, but it's a material change in the surface. What you're doing is you're compressing all the roughness and basically polishing it smooth. The clay has to be at the right dryness for this. If it's too dry, you can get a really glossy surface, but you can't push it all down. So what you end up with is a mostly glossy surface with divots that you can't heal over because you can't compress it enough. And if the clay is too wet, it will just collapse. So you want leather hard for this and a, the rib to match, but a relatively firm rib. Um, and this is where you can only do it if you've got uh, the right sort of clay, because when you fire a groggy clay, um, which is the kind of the the pre-fired chunks that go into it. So if you've got a stoneware that's quite coarse on the hand uh, with lots of lumps in it, that's grog. The grog doesn't shrink as much as the clay does in the firing because it's pre-fired lumps. And that means that it will come back out again. So you can polish it smooth at this stage. Uh, I don't think I've got any... Oh yeah, I do have one hand. So, you can sort of hear, this is a, a groggier stoneware. There's a bit more texture has come out in the bisque. And and then this is one of the old hand-built uh, pyramids I used to make way before I, before I got a wheel. But you can hear this literal the, the the black specks are uh well actually because they're black they're probably something like iron or manganese but um they've come up and there's also a grog in this and it you can you really need to sand that back whereas you don't with a smoother clay so depending on your clay it's worth spending more or less time on that because you'll either it'll carry across or it won't mine you can see the bisque, where well, you probably can't, I don't know if you can tell the difference in the sound, because there's nothing catching, it's, it stays smooth, and it will stay smooth through the firing. Um, just because I'm doing it, I'll show you how I get the shape on it. So what I do is I throw it basically as thick as I want it to be. There's a little bit to take off just around the corner, but that's basically it. Um, and then I use one of the ball modeling tools and I just press in slightly to define a foot ring. What that does is it bends the clay down only a fraction of a millimeter but that's all you need to get clearance. And what that means is there's now a raised foot 
ring for it to sit on so it'll be sitting on the outer edge it won't kind of rock from the middle uh, but you haven't had to throw the extra clay and trim back and then I use the to put a swell in the bottom just because why not um, so that because if I can catch the light right you should be able to see it's quite glossy and it will stay that smooth in the firing um, so it will well, through both firings uh, if you've got a groggier clay it won't so this stage only takes a few seconds it might be worth doing anyway um, because you'll compress most of it smooth but if you've got a groggy clay you have to do the next stage which I'll record in a second but that's after the glaze firing then you can also get it smooth from there right so this is what I do with pieces after they've been fired uh, I have diamond core tools in fact I'm using diamond core tools for all the sanding stuff I highly recommend them I know they're pricey and there are people selling similar stuff that is possibly cheaper but the nice thing with um, the diamond core tool stuff is that you know it will last and it's all of excellent quality and they're developing new stuff and trying to constantly improve what they make so definitely a company that I want to continue to support and I've you know I've bought plenty of their things over the years and would highly recommend that if you're going to get something just get it from them from the start and you'll never have to replace this sanding pad I've had for basically as long as I've been potting and it's starting to get a little ropey around the edges but it still works absolutely fine um, so they are an investment but this is a 60 grit disc this is a recent, recent purchase that I was waiting for them for ages to come in stock in the UK and gave up and just imported one so then you've got to pay import duties but people do stock them in other countries just quite often they're sold out because everyone wants to buy them um, the nice thing with the disc is that it gets the bottom flat whereas if you've got a wavy bottom these pads will smooth it but if they won't flatten it so it will still rock on a surface whereas this one won't so 60 grit on this is really aggressive you'll see the piece jump around as I do it with all these things you want to work with the sanding stuff wet so that the grinding turns into paste rather than dust and then you can just wipe it up afterwards uh, if you're taking a lot off especially if they're glazes and you kind of it will knock some of the glaze off as sharp chunks so you want to be careful cleaning the wheel up afterwards making sure you get all of them don't throw with them in the pan because if one of them got kind of if you picked it up on a sponge or something and got it it could slice your hand open so that's just something to be aware of but for sanding the bottom of a mug like this it's not going to be a problem there's nothing to knock off to be sharp it's just only if you've got glaze drips that run right to the bottom and you're going to be taking a lot of them off you've got to be aware of that um, but yeah just something to bear in mind if that's the case so all I do is run it on there for a few seconds and you can't really see but you can see it's got it wet around the edge and that's just that will have skimmed across all the high points if there were any and taken them off and you can check in fact that does still rock just a little bit so it depends how flat there we go that doesn't rock at all depends how flat the piece was at the start um, but only takes a few seconds to, to take off quite a, fair, a lot of clay because this is an aggressive pad I would almost recommend having bought the 60 because it's the most aggressive if your pots tend to be pretty close to how you want them just get the 120 because 60 is almost overkill that's the first stage so what I'll do is I'll, I'll line up 
all my parts and pass them through that first. And then the second stage is how I used to do it just like this, but now obviously I've, I've got that to level them first. But clamp them on the Giffen grip, um, and then I have, this is a, a one of the new design of pads. This is flexible 60 grip. Um, I do a quick pass of that over because the disc will potentially, it will only be going in kind of like a defined circle. So you can actually, if you ground more off, you will be able to see the circular line. So what I do is I just pass this over. And it takes the more defined lines out. But most of the sanding is done with the pad that I said that I've had for ages. And this is a 120 flexible pad. This is an old style. I don't know if they're still exactly the same as this if you buy the rounded corners ones. But um, yeah, so that's 120. And 120 is a really nice grade. You can get it to basically silky smooth. You don't need to go above 120. But I do have a 240 as well just to finish it off. And the nice thing with the flexible one as well is that you can, you'll see that I'm pushing it over the edge. So what you get is it will map the contour of it and smooth everything. The more firm pads uh, can't quite do that. And then finally, 240. And remember, get them all wet before you start. And I literally just pass that over because it's, you can keep going up, they've got many grades of um, of pad up to, I can't remember, it's like 2,000, 3,000, something like that, which is super, super fine. And depending on how smooth you want to get it, you can get it basically polished with that, but you've got to you know, spend a minute at each grade. But in terms of just getting it to feel you know, really smooth, if any of you have bought my pots, you'll know kind of how smooth the bottoms feel. That's generally, it's no higher than 240. This is the, the finest grade I have. Um, but generally I just go to 120 unless there's a, a reason to go to 240 because 120 feels really smooth. You kind of, you, at that point, if you spent kind of 10, 20 seconds with the 120 on it, it feels as smooth across the bottom as it does on a, like a glossy glaze. So, there isn't too much argument for spending that much longer going higher and higher unless that's your thing and I know some potters like to get it so it is literally glassy. As I said uh, before, if you've got a groggy clay, all of these will have to be done a bit more because the burnishing, the effect of the burnishing will be reduced as the grog comes out in the firing. Um, I don't have anything I can demonstrate that on because I don't tend to use groggy clays anymore. But uh, it just takes an extra few seconds, especially with the 60 grit, either of the 60 grits, they'll eat through it. But uh, yeah, you just just take a few more seconds um, but that is how you get super glossy bottoms and if you want to feel what that feels like you'll just have to buy one of my pots or buy the diamond core stuff and do it to your own pots but uh, either way it's nice to have at the very least you want to get it so that it feels like it's not going to scratch a surface which you can get to that stage with very little effort um, and then glossier is nicer. So it just depends how much time your bed put into every piece. But that's all I do. Um, very simple process. Adds a few minutes to the end of each piece, but uh, I think it's worth it.